I'm here with Gary Lloyd, the President and CEO of Centurion Research Solutions. Gary, welcome to Government Contracting Weekly. Thank you. Good to be here. We're glad you're here. Very happy to be here. Really it's are. a great show. Okay, so look, I know uh, many, many of our viewers are quite familiar with Cent Centurion, but for, for those who are not, could you tell us a little bit about your company and then maybe how what you do is going to be applicable and a value to our listening or viewing audience? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. We are the leading provider of relevant business intelligence and winning analytics, actionable winning analytics for the, for the industry. We couple that with professional services, wrap rate analysis, uh, uh, cost structure, um, financial readiness, competitive pricing analysis, those kinds of things. That's very valuable in a day where you've got to be very competitive and you're, we're looking to help our clients win more business in the federal market. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done that through some innovative products and services. So we provide these through a subscription-based services model, which means that we augment, we complement what our clients already have in place. We don't replace it, we're not a software company. Mm -hmm. We just augment it. You know, with that, <clears throat> I think when you look at the company, we brought in seasoned professionals. These, these individuals from uh, Northrop Grumman, Titan, BDM, CSC, Verizon, big companies that bring thought leadership to the table, that's been infused across the board in our service offerings. And um, that's made it really strong because these people, they've been there and done it. We carry a bag, we've won deals, we right. pursued deals. Right. And um, when I acquired the company in 2006, we had about 100 clients, 5,000 opportunities we were tracking, and um, uh, today, we are uh, um, we are at about a thousand clients, and we're tracking about thirty thousand opportunities. The difference between today and then is real business intelligence, actionable business intelligence right. that we're going to share on the show, that the viewing audience and our clients can can act on and, and, so and make decisions. That's why you're on the show, and that's how our audience is going to benefit from it. Exactly, that's, I think that's why you're here. Rich okay. content, uh, tips, perspectives, yeah. Yeah. insight, opportunities. Uh, trends, all the all that kind of information that we're going to share with your yeah. viewing audience. Yeah. And by the way, I've seen some of this data firsthand. It's it's very impressive, and it's also usable and very timely and current. You know, in fact, um, just uh, a few weeks ago, we released our analysis of the president's budget request, mm -hmm. and a 1.24 trillion dollar discretionary spending budget request. Very insightful. Viewing audience can download that. Go to our website, CenturionResearch.com. Download it. It's full of a wealth of information. Yeah. And we look forward in, in future episodes to you know, talking about that and exploring the richness of that data. Okay, Gary, so we, we understand a little bit about Centurion's background and I would ca call it your mission, your motivation, why you're doing business, which in many ways in the end is to help companies win work. And by the way, we, we share that in common to the, right, right. to the nth degree. And I know you have a lot of data, you were just sort of mentioning a little bit of it, and I know that you tweak it and massage it and consort it and analyze it and interpret it and explain it to us laymen what it really means. So I know you have a number of different products and services we talked about. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through a couple of these, of the applications, uh, and if you could just maybe explain for our audience, uh, the, the utility, why it matters for them, why it cares, why will, why will it benefit them, what what does it do? I think sure, that's part sure. of it. Okay, so is that all right? We'll oh, start yeah, with that? Yeah, okay, so yeah. let's start with one, opportunity alerts. So opportunity alerts, you know, when, you, when we look at opportunities, we, they're, they're kind of going to different buckets. Uh -huh. You know, there might be an opportunity that we, we, as we went through the president's budget, did that analysis, we've right. identified some opportunities. There's actual money associated with those opportunities. There's a time frame associated with some opportunities, mm -hmm. and um, we've identified those opportunity alerts. There might be others as we comb through the president's budget to identify emerging opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not have may not have a line item, but we may through the analysis on the budget, yep. uh, GAO reports, uh, CBO things coming out of the federal government uh, out of the federal government. A strategic plans to identify emerging opportunities. Okay, so the essence is that you're identifying a lot of these things long before everybody and their brother and sister know about it because you're out in front of that market and doing the alerts, okay? Emerging trends, I know that sounds obvious what emerging trends are, but how does that work? I mean, what is that, what's that all about? Well, em emerging trends, combination of a couple things. You've got, you've got street talk, mm -hmm. you know, so what's the buzz? And, and street talk being it could be what's going on in the economy. Mm -hmm. What's that gonna do uh, to the federal government? How does it impact the federal government? We're seeing a lot of that right now. Then you've got the plans that uh, agencies are making. Then you've got actions 
that they are they're actually implementing certain things. And when you look at the data in the past and you pull all that together, you can predict and bring some level of, of, of predictability in an uncertain market to the table. That's what we're trying to do, especially today, right, right. because it's a very, very different market. And so we've, you and I have talked uh, off camera before about uh, what, we are, what we're calling uh, what's hot. So how about sharing with our audience what you, know, what you mean by that and how sure. you'll help us in that area? Sure, you, yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you know me, I've, yeah. I've, I've got my data, uh -huh. and so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna refer to a couple of things, but you know, when you look at what's hot, you know, uh, healthcare IT is very hot. Yep. Uh, in VA, VA is a top priority for the president. You know, how can he provide world-class care for our wounded warriors? Top, top priority. You look at cybersecurity, that's another one. Huge, huge, huge priority. $13 billion for uh, cybersecurity IT, which makes up about 16% of the IT budget of $82 billion. I mean, these are, these are very, very hot markets. Okay, so Gary, we've talked uh, about Centurion and its its business line and what you all do, and we've talked about how our audience is going to benefit from the superb work that you do. Uh, we've also talked about some of the things in future weeks that um, uh, that you're going to bring to the show to help our audience uh, better win government contracts. So now I want to just kind of uh, step back a little bit and ask you maybe uh, put it all in perspective for us in terms of some of your research of recent weeks. You've, uh, what are some of the, maybe the two or three uh, key things that you're finding that you think you might want to share with uh, with our audience. Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, as I, as I said, we uh, completed our analysis yes. of the president's budget. We found on our on our website, centurionresearch.com, and download it. It's available to the viewers. Uh, but you know, there's some other key opportunities that that have we combed through the and conducted the, combed through the budget, and conducted the analysis. Um, there are many opportunities. We talked about healthcare IT. And VA and cybersecurity, okay. uh, big opportunities. You know, when you look at HHS, CIO, CS, a $10 billion opportunity. You know, VA, which I talked about earlier, but that's a $3.9 billion um, budget, a 20% increase over 2013. DHS, Eagle II, a $22, $22 billion right. opportunity. Right. Uh, the energy, uh, energy department, the IT budget, $24.8 billion. That's a $1.7 billion increase. There are opportunities like this throughout the president's budget. Well, I was going to say, I know you've analyzed the, the budget. The ink is hardly dry on it, and you found some things that, that maybe are not generally known to the to the government contracting community. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit about that? Sure. I, yeah. I, I kind of, you know, what I love about this program, you know, I love that term, and which I picked up on your program, news you can use. Yeah. News you can use. I love that term. So, so I've got these underlying bright spots uh -huh. in the in the president's budget, mm -hmm. and um, and and on the surface maybe it looks like they're not so not so hot. SBA's budget was slashed fifty percent. Yeah, people say SBA's on the you know is on a uh, sort of a spiral downwards. You're saying the what? the IT budget, however, yeah. um, only went down 0.2 percent from 13 to 14. But that's not the good news. Here's the good news. The good news is from 2012 to 2014, it increased over 11 percent. Okay, so that's a bright spot. What's another one? Give me another, give one, another one. Another one be education. Education is another bright spot. Between 13 and 14, the budget was basically neutral. But when you look at comparing 2012 to 2014, that budget increased over 10 percent. Okay. So what you're saying really is that despite all the talk of austerity, there are there is some silver lining that people can be aware of and, and act on, and I think that's what you're going to bring to the show. And that's what we're going to try to bring to the yeah. show. You know, a, another one that uh, President so President Obama, it's a top priority for him. He's investing an additional 50 billion dollars in transportation. That budget went down 44 percent. But it's still 50. Billion. Fifty billion, billion yeah. to improve the nation's infrastructure. So that's an example of some of the uh, research and content and sort of, sort of forecasting I think we're going to get from Centurion. So once again, like I said at the very beginning, we're, we're very proud, very happy that you're on the show. I can't wait to uh, share with our audience a lot of these different perspectives and analytics that you bring to bear because frankly we've done our, we did our own research and you're best in the market. So well, that's thank you. I appreciate you. that. Thanks very much, Jim. Okay.